Good afternoon. Go ahead and get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. I attempted to do this video yesterday, and it was three hours in length, and there was a glitch within it, and I tried to fix it, but I couldn't, so had to be scrapped. <laughs> But today, Lord willing, we'll go ahead and get this done. I want to talk to you today a little bit about two wisdoms. The wisdom of man and the wisdom that comes from God. First, let us look into the scriptures. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please follow me along. Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Exodus chapter 28. Exodus chapter 28. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Here's the first mention of the word wisdom within the scriptures. Exodus chapter 28, verses 1 on to verse 3. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother, and his sons with him, from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. <coughs> and thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom... I have filled with the spirit, lowercase s, of wisdom, that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So what do we see? Number one, that we see that the Lord is the one who fills with wisdom in order to fulfill his purposes. Right? Yes? Okay. But that is the first reference to the word wisdom within the scriptures. <clears throat> now, as I said, there are two wisdoms. There is another wisdom. The wisdom that comes from God and the wisdom that is of the earth, earthly, sensual, and devilish. Turn now in your... Uh, scriptures to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. James chapter 1, verses 5 on to verse 8. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And on this too... Go to Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 6. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, lowercase w, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God more offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And was not found, because God had translated him. <coughs> For 
before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. And you go back now to James chapter 1. Let's reread verses 5 on to verse 8 again. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Okay? But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in his, all his ways. When it comes to reading the scriptures, do you pray and ask the Lord for wisdom, understanding, and knowledge that he will reveal to you truth through the scriptures? Speak, Lord, for your servant heareth. Do you do that? Or are you dependent on, like, these study Bibles? Do you pray? Do you seek the Lord for wisdom to reveal truth to you through his word? But now, now go to James chapter 3. Let's read verse 1, but then we will be reading... Verses 13 on to verse 18, okay? James chapter 3, verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. You know, when you go about, led by the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to preach or to teach from the scriptures, um, that's a very serious calling. That's a various thing. A very serious thing to um, to preach, to teach. Because, guess what? You're going to give an account for everything that you have said, spoken, and taught unto others. That's why it's very important that you are led of the Holy Ghost. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that Spirit. Okay? Very, very important. I'm going to have to give an account at the judgment seat of Christ. For every single little thing that I have ever spoken, preached, or taught unto any of you. Something very, very serious for you to consider. Very serious. And Lord have mercy on you if you are one who teaches heresy. But now jump down. To verses 13 and we will be reading verses 13 on to the end of the chapter in James chapter 3. <clears throat> Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. Now check this out. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Look at verse 15. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Earthly, sensual, and devilish. Earthly, of the earth. You and I were created from the dirt. Earthly. Sensual, led by your senses, your feelings. 
devilish. Whispered unto you of devils, guided by devils, such as like Jesuits. And what is this wisdom? Verse 14, but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. <clears throat> and look at verse 16, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. What do you want your wisdom for? Is it to know the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is it to make you look good? To put another notch in your belt? To impress people? To one-up someone? Hmm? Do you seek wisdom of the Lord to know the Lord Jesus Christ through the scriptures that you may pass it along on to others? Or just merely to make yourself look like a somebody. Hmm? Go to now 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's look a little bit at this wisdom of men. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verses 17 on to verse 31. I'm going to put my, my notes over here where I can see them a little bit better. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 17 on to verse 31 to end the chapter. Okay? <clears throat> we read, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. <laughs> Exegesis. Hermeneutics. <laughs> Big, fancy, schmancy sounding words. To where, if you listen to somebody, you need a dictionary to follow them. Right. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? <clears throat> Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Look at that. The world by wisdom knew not God. You've heard the phrase, um, you got to be educated to be that dumb. <laughs> you got to be that educated to believe some of the things that these uh, Jesuit trained cemeterians push in these church buildings. You have to be kind of dense to fall for some of the things that these coadjutors here online teach you. Who do you look for? For answers. Who do you look for? Men or God? Verse 22, for the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, 
Not many noble are called. What's the drawback with these uh, not many wise, not many mighty, not many noble? They have a, a stronger chance of being puffed up. It doesn't say that not any of them won't be called. No, it doesn't say that. It says not many. Not many. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God's a God of little guy, you could say. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and the things which are not to bring to nothing things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who is of God, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Look at that verse. But of him, but of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus Christ is made unto us wisdom. What is that wisdom? Job 28. Job 28, verse 28. Job 28, verse 28. Job 28, verse 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart, and to depart from evil is understanding. Do you fear the Lord? Do you fear the Lord? Do you approach the Lord in prayer when it comes to reading the scripture? Believing that you ask of him that he will reveal truth to you through the scriptures? Or do you got to try to figure it out on your own? Your own wisdom. But now, go back to 1 Corinthians and let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2 and I brethren when I came to you came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom declaring unto you the testimony of God <clears throat> for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ in him crucified and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom unto them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect, but their hearts are perfect toward the Lord. They love the Lord, truly love the Lord. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Take part. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. 
But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Right there, love him. Love him. Verse 7, or excuse me, verse 6. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. And right there, verse 9, but as it is written, I hath not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his capital S, Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what, know, for what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit, lowercase s, of man, which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the capital S, Spirit of God. Now we have received, not the lowercase s, Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, that we might know, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. You know, there are those out there who are not of the Church of the Living God, who are not saved, who do not have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord. It's that Spirit dwelling within them. But yet, they will try to expound to you the things of Scripture. They, they think that they know what the Scripture says. But see, they're lacking something very, very needful and important. The Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Verse 14, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. He, but he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ because Christ lives within us. Christ lives within us. Okay? Go to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verses 15 on to verse 31. John 14, verses 15 to verse 31. If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Again, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of Truth, is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay, One God consisting of Spirit, Soul, and Body. Okay? Let's continue. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live. Ye shall live also. 
At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us, and not unto the world? Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. <clears throat> Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away, and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I, referring to the soul of the Godhead. Okay? God the Father is the soul. Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, is the body. And the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. Spirit, soul, and body. One God. One God. Not three persons that make one God. No more? No. No, 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 no. Okay? That's what he means by, for my Father is greater than I. Okay? And now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it has come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me, but that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Look at verse 26 again. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And look at verse 30. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. The prince of this world. The prince of this world. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 4. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, and we, uh, we faint not, I depart but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, like many of the false prophets here on YouTube do. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God, little g, of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine onto them. The God of this world. And you also have to remember in Ephesians chapter 6, in Ephesians chapter 6, Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, 
against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. It's a pyramid effect kind of thing. Starts at the top and trickles its way down. Okay? All these false prophets here on YouTube answer to a provincial. Don't you? Yes, because you guys don't come up with this stuff on your own. Give me a break. No, you're being fed this stuff. And you're answering to a provincial. Comes from the top and works its way it works its way down onto the other parts. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Go to Luke. Go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. We're going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 13. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when, he and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. Now you're going to see this, okay? The conflicts of these two wisdoms. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. You're the Son of God? God manifest in the flesh? You're hungry? Hey! Make these stones bread. Feed yourself. Take care of number one. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil taking him up into a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it, if thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. Now see, again, the conflict of the two wisdoms. In verse 3, Satan was um, saying to our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, again, you're hungry, right? Take care of yourself. Make these bread. And how did our Lord answer? It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And right here, and the devil taking him up into a high mountain, way high up, shoot unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee. I'll make you king. I'll make everyone bow down to you. <laughs> and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, to whomsoever I will, I give it. Right there. For that is delivered unto me. Delivered unto him. Satan is allowed of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to have rule over this world. He is the little G-God of this world. And it's given on him to do so. And to whomsoever I will, I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And how many have fallen for that trap? Worship me and I'll give you everything. Look at Joel Osteen. Look at those prosperity preachers. 
Look at that Phil Robertson guy. You worship the devil. Put a little leaven within what is being taught. Just a little. Doesn't take that much. All will be thine. And what is it profited if a man gained the whole world and loses his own soul? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. But now watch this. Watch this. Now see, he was appealing to him for his hunger. Take care of number one. He was appealing to him for his glory, right? To give him everything. The wisdom of this world. And our Lord, of course, Jesus Christ God our Father, answering, it is written. The wisdom of God. But now check this out. And he brought him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, throwing it back at him, trying to use scripture against the one who wrote it. <laughs> he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Quoting uh, from Psalm 91, taking it out of context, of course, of course. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Referring to himself, of course. <laughs> Tempting the Lord Jesus Christ to give signs on these on to people, casting himself down and say, oh, look, see? Yeah. Yeah. What did the Lord say? There shall be no sign given unto this generation except the sign of the prophet Jonas. Right? And even the Pharisees said of Jesus, let him come down now from the cross that we may believe him. You see? The wisdom of the world. And of course, and Jesus answering said unto him, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Right here, the conflict of the two wisdoms. The world, the devil, earthly, sensual, devilish. You see that? Appearing, uh, appealing onto the senses. Okay? And the wisdom of God, which is first pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of uh, good fruits. And also to uh, even more so clarify this, go to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 23. Just one verse. Matthew chapter 17, verse 23. Um, this is after that our Lord Jesus Christ um, said that it was himself was the rock onto which he would build his church, and the gates of hell would not prevail against it. Sorry, you Catholics, it's not Peter. Okay. The Lord was talking about himself. Upon himself he shall build his church. But note this. Let's read verses 22 and 23. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee, meaning that our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, was going to the cross. And look at this. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Those 
that be of men, earthly, Go back to John now. John chapter 15. Okay? John chapter 15. John chapter 15 verses 18 on to verse 27. John chapter 15 verses 18 on to verse 27. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. Preaching a gospel of just believe, without any brokenness or contrition. Twisting, perverting, scriptural repentance, as from going from unbelief to belief. The devils also believe. And tremble. Oh yeah. Yeah, you preach that type of gospel. Yeah, you're going to have people lining up to your door, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and there's that nasty little thing of calling on the name of the Lord, which is the ultimate shoe of your humility as a broken, contrite sinner coming to the Lord at the after the end of yourself and believing on him for what he did for you on the cross. And calling upon the name of the Lord. But oh no, oh no, just believe. Just believe. Yeah. See, you easy believism heretics. Is it God's grace that saves you or your belief? Come on now. <laughs> Let's reread this. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. You easy believism heretics, you don't know who the Lord is. Your Jesus is the Antichrist, not the one told you and uh, uh, revealed to you within the scriptures. You're worshiping and preaching a false Jesus. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin, but now they have no cloak for their sin. He that heareth me, or he that hateth me, hateth my father also. You know, you're actually shewing hatred for the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, when you demote him and make him one of three gods? The one in the middle died for me. You know, if you're a Trinitarian, you hate God. Because which God are you talking about? All three that make one? Give me a break. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had... They had not had sin, but now they have both seen and hated both me and my father. Because one God, one God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But this cometh to pass, 
that the word might be fulfilled that it is that it is written in their law that they hated me without a cause. But when the Comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceedeth from the Father, he shall testify of me. And ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. The Comforter, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of truth, and the Lord is that Spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You're jumping over scriptural repentance and brokenness. Fighting against calling on the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ hasn't revealed unto you anything. But your father, the devil, And his goons, the Jesuits, who give you your scripts to read from and to follow. You make it kind of obvious there, my dear boy. <laughs> you really do. And now, John 16, verses 7 on to verse 16. John 16, verse 7, on to verse 16. Okay? Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not, go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. And of righteousness and of judgment. I've heard people say that the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, which you have in you if you are truly saved and born again, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. I've heard people say that the Holy Ghost doesn't convict you of sin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> there are people out there that actually teach that. And the spirit that they have is the spirit of a devil. Not our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Because remember, the God that these people are preaching doesn't judge, doesn't convict you of sin. Is okay with you being as the world. Has no requirements of you. Has no chastening. Changed life after salvation is uh, is a choice. It doesn't come naturally. No, it's not something that is a necessity. It's not something that the Lord brings upon you himself. It's an option. <laughs> Verse 9. Uh, let's, read, let's read verse 8 again. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father. And ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. And the prince of this world is Satan. I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again, a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go 
to the Father. Look at verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. What is truth? What is truth? Hmm? What is truth? John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What else is truth? John chapter 17, verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. The authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Look at verse uh, 13 in John chapter 16. Albeit when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. You ask the Lord to reveal truth unto you through the scripture and wait on him and expect him to do so. He will reveal truth to you through the scriptures. He will reveal himself through the scriptures and he will give you such treasures of wisdom, understanding and knowledge. But do you trust him to do so? And you have to remember, dear friend, the spirit of truth, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, what he reveals to you will not contradict Scripture. Okay? It will not contradict Scripture. Because you have people out there who will say to you that you don't need to read the Scriptures. And they will go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Okay? Go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. Okay? John chapter 5, verses 39 on to verse 47. We read, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. Now I've heard people say uh, that one wicked devil, Jean Bashoff, who's burning in hell as we speak, okay, he would come to verse uh, 39 and 40 and say, you don't need to read the Bible. This is written by men. This is not the word of God. And he would point to this, that even Jesus said, search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. Keep reading. Verse 41. I receive not honor from men. Earthly, sensual, devilish. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. The love of God in you. We speak wisdom to those who are perfect, who love the Lord, truly love the Lord. And you know something? You easy believism heretics, and I, I know you're watching. Do you truly love the Lord? That, I'm sorry. That's kind of a trick question for you. Because how can you love the Lord if you don't come to him broken, knowing of what a scoundrel and of how worthy you are to go to hell? How can you love him if you're just walking along one day, ho de ho de ho oh, oh, oh yeah, I believe the facts given to me within the scriptures, I believe that, and now I'm saved. How can you love the Lord? How can you truly, you easy believism heretics, how can you truly love the Lord when you 
jump over brokenness and contrition and contend and contend against what is given to us in the scriptures about calling on the name of the Lord, which crosses dispensational lines. Oh, this is just for the Jew. Oh, shut up. Shut up. You're wicked and you're full of pride and you have never come to the end of yourselves because you're saved by your belief. You're saved by your own work. Not by grace through faith. Yeah. Yeah. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Not one of you easy believism heretics. Not one of you. Not one of you have the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Amen, amen, preach it, brother. Yeah, yeah. If someone else comes in his own name. Mm -hmm. Who do you follow? You follow men or the Lord? And, and look at verse 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Oh boy. Oh boy. You pervert the scriptural meaning of repentance. And make and turn salvation into something that's like that. And all your backloading works into uh, onto salvation. Uh, newsflash, here, genius. The works that Paul talks about—they're the works of the Levitical law. Okay. You guys will do anything to justify yourselves. You'll do anything to justify your sins. Lord, have mercy on you. If you so choose. Now look at this. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye... Now, right, now look at this. For had ye believed Moses... He would have, have believed me, for he wrote of me. Now these guys, they thought in actually just reading the scriptures, okay, that that would give them life. And just reading it without the love of God. Without the love of God. Because what does he say right here? But I know you that ye have not the love of uh, God in you. Okay? And what did we read in John, uh, uh, a little later in John? If ye love me, you'll keep my commandments. There's no commandments for us to keep today. <laughs> uh, you know what? You say something like that, then what is your standard? You? <laughs> Good luck with that. Have fun storming the castle. Okay, you read Romans chapter 13 sometime about the commandments for us today. We have today in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, within the Pauline epistles, doctrine specifically for us. We have a plethora of commandments. Well, that's so hard, right? Yeah. But now let's continue. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? See, the Lord was actually lifting up the scriptures. 
He was in no wise saying, don't read the scriptures. No, he was lifting them up. Because these people, and also here on YouTube, and also outside your door, especially in these church buildings, they don't love God. And they are trying to teach people the void of the spirit of truth, which will guide them into all truth. No, they're trusting in their degrees and what they learned at their cemetery schools. Earthly, sensual, devilish. Yeah. Yeah. But see now, and also too, brethren, you, we have to remember this. Go to Ezekiel. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ah, I moved my notes. Beg your pardon. Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 13 on to verse 19. Ezekiel chapter 28. Verses 13 on to verse 19. This is talking about Satan. Okay? Now check this out. Thou hast been in the garden of God, and thou hast been in Eden, the garden of a God. Now was Tyrus in the garden of Eden? No. Who was? That old serpent, the devil, Satan. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Satan is a created being. He is the anointed cherub. And look at all these bright, glittering, shiny stones that he was covered with. Sun of the morning, brightness, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Let's continue. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. What was his iniquity? What got Satan cast out of heaven? Let's read. By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Aha! Pride. Pride was what got Satan kicked out of heaven. He's as the accuser, he has to appear before the Lord to get permission to attack the children of God. Okay, you read that in Job chapters 1 and 2. Okay, you can also see that about in uh, Luke chapter 22 when the Lord says unto uh, uh, Shimon, he says, Shimon, Shimon, Satan hath desired to, to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. And when thou art converted, that thy, uh, he says, But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Okay? But pride. It was pride. But look at this. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay, these, lay thee before kings, 
that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. And they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Satan's ultimate end is destruction. And his wisdom, which is corrupt, perverted. Remember, the temptation in the Garden of Eve, when Satan tempted Eve to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, said, Ye shall not surely die, or thou shalt not surely die, excuse me. But God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, that your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yea, hath God said. The wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Isaiah chapter 14. These are familiar verses to you. Yes. But we have to remember. We have to remember this. Isaiah chapter 14. Verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? That's what Lucifer means, son of the morning. How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Right there. I will be like the Most High. The wisdom of this world exalts the flesh. That ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Now, let's, let's go... Let's go now to Luke chapter 22, okay? I made reference of this, but this is also very good to look at, okay? As far as the conflict of these two wisdoms. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. Let's read verses 31 on to verse 32. Uh, actually, let us read verses 31 on to verse 34. Okay? Check this out. And the Lord said, Shimon, Shimon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day, before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. Now, now let's read... Verses 54 under verse 62. The sifting. Sifting of Peter. Okay? The Lord said that you're going to deny me. And Peter said, no, I'm not. <laughs> you talk about it, yea, hath God said. And remember, earlier... We had read 
that uh, Jesus said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Peter was not yet converted. Verses 54 on to verse 62. Then took they him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house, and Peter followed afar off. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among them. But a certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man also was with him. And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know, I know him not. Had to think of himself. He was amongst these people. If he had been known, hey, that could have been him. You had to think of, he had to think of himself, of his own safety, right? Even though he said, I'll never deny you. Taking care of number one. And after a little while, and after a little while, another saw him and said, Thou art also of them. And Peter said, Man, I am not. Again, thinking of himself, protecting himself. And about the space of one hour after, Another confidently, confidently affirmed, saying of a truth, This fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. <coughs> and Peter said, Man, I know not what thou sayest. And immediately while he yet spake, the cock crew. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter. You talk about, I told you so. Can you imagine what that was like? Have you ever been warned, Church of the Living God, of something not to do and you did it anyway? And you can almost see in your mind the Lord looking at you like, I told you so. And Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him before the cock crow, Thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter went out wept bitterly. Self-preservation. Similar to the temptation that Satan put forth before the Lord after he had fasted for 40 days. Self-preservation. Earthly. Sensual. Now, um, also now, okay, let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I spoke with a brother today, this morning. Um, the Lord revealed something to him through in the scriptures here. Uh, praise the Lord for that. Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 and verse 12, okay? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard, uh, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love which ye have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, which has come unto you, as it is in the, all the world, and bringeth forth fruit, as it doth also in you, since the day ye heard of it, and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye also learned of Epipharis, our dear fellow souls, fellow servant, beg your pardon, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. 
For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Aha! That ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Increasing in the knowledge of God. Okay? Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meek to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins who is the image of the invisible god the firstborn of every creature for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence, that he might have the preeminence, okay? Spirit of truth, and he shall guide you into all truth, okay? But now let's look at uh, Colossians chapter 2, which I was supposed to read, <laughs> which I had in my notes, but it worked out that way, okay? Now Colossians chapter 2. We will read verses 1 on to verse 12 in Colossians chapter 2. I know we read uh, a little bit more than um, I had said, but praise be to the Lord. Okay? Colossians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 12 here. Okay? For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you, and for them at Laodicea, and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of Christ. Okay? Remember, you are truly saved and born again. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. You have the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within you, and he will guide you into all truth. Seek him diligently. Okay? Because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. All right? Let's continue. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words, for though I have been, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the Lord case as spirit, joining and beholding your order, and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving. Right here. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Philosophy. What does that mean? Let's read. After the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Not after Christ. Deceit. And not after Christ. Philosophy and vain deceit are defined after the tradition of men, 
after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, spirit, soul, and body. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. The wisdom of God is Christ Jesus our Lord. And you being truly saved and born again, you have the wisdom of God dwelling within you. Now that, that doesn't mean that he will reveal all things to you, no. <laughs> In his time he will. But with that, Go to Acts chapter 17 now. Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. How do you come upon this wisdom? Acts chapter 17. Oops. Acts chapter 17. Verses 10 on to verse 13. Acts chapter 17. Verses 10 on to verse 13. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so. Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and of men, not a few. But now look what happens. Look what happens. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. Isn't that interesting, huh? When the word of God is being preached... And people are, are what? Receiving the word with all readiness of mind and also searching the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. What did we read in James? Go back there, hold your place here. What did we read in James? Okay, James chapter 3. What did we read? James chapter 3. Verses 13 on to verse 18. Who is as a wise man and endued, who is a wise man, excuse me, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out a good conversation, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And when you go back to Acts chapter 17, these were more, uh, verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word with all readiness of mind. All readiness of mind. 
mature. In James chapter 3, verse 17, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without and without hypocrisy. They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. And good fruits? Therefore many of them believed, also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few, and then strife and envying. But when the Jews of set of eh, beg your pardon. <laughs> but when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached to Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. The wisdom of this world is strife and envy. The wisdom of this world, which has its foundation in Satan, exalts the flesh. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. But the wisdom of the Lord, that comes from the Lord, through the Holy Ghost, and through the Scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter two, verse fifteen. If you're not using the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures. You're going to miss. Uh, you're going to be missing a very important word that they have changed. Second Timothy two, chapter uh, verse fifteen. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing, rightly dividing, dispensationally. This whole book is for me, but it's not all written unto me. What is specifically written unto me is found within the Pauline epistles. Doctrine for us today in this current dispensation, the time of the Gentiles. Okay? This whole book is for me, but it's not all written unto me. And 2 Timothy chapter 3. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Hello! <laughs> Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For, the, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers' lusts. And here it is, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Janais and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. 
but they shall proceed no further. For for their folly shall be made shall be manifest on to all men as theirs also was. It's only so far, you false, you you fakes. Excuse me, fake part. It's only so far you fakes can go. Because you have not the Spirit of God within you. You can't get into deep expositional scripture. You can't. You can't. You're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Because your wisdom is the wisdom of this world earthly, sensual, devilish. Verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Look at verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. John. Go back to John. John chapter 16. Verses 13 on to verse 15. How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me. For he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall shew it unto you. Being assured of who thou hast learned it from. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And those of you, you easy believers and heretics. What has the Lord revealed unto you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Because you are not of God. Your father is the devil. Whose wisdom that you get from him is earthly, sensual, devilish. A wisdom that gratifies your flesh that puts you first and not the Lord and his word. Hence, brethren, sisters, the conflict of two wisdoms. The 
conflict of two wisdoms. The one wisdom is of the earth, centered on the flesh. The other, centered on the spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Well, this is uh, very different than what I had originally intended, which I had originally done, but because um, I had a whole bunch of notes. But I, um, I think this is the way that the Lord uh, wanted, wanted it to be done, <laughs> this today. So... Um, Brethren, be careful with what wisdom it is that you are following. Because there, are, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. There is a way that seems sensible unto you, but what saith the Scriptures? There's something that seems just, uh, yeah, it's common sense. Yeah, let's do this. Let's say it's the scriptures. Let's say it's the scriptures. Anyway, um, that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully this might help. One of you, hopefully, hope so. Um, hopefully, our Lord Jesus Christ be uh, magnified. And um, thank you so much for watching this. If you do, uh, we are praying for many of you. And just thank you. Thank you so very much. God be the glory. And again, thank you all very, very much, so much for watching, if you do. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.